Welcome back to Tasty Live, everybody. This is the Tasty Crypto Show. My name is Ryan Garris, Grace. <clears throat> what is my name? Ryan Grace. And I'm here with uh, the one and only, but a new addition to the network, Mad Mike, fresh off the plane from Mexico. Welcome to the network. Thank you, Ryan. It's great to be here. My first time in the studio. Um, it's nice and cool in here. You yeah, know, it's very you relaxing. Like it? Yeah. Sometimes when I get hot, I get a little bit, uh, you know, red. But it's very comfortable. It's a very comfortable environment. You're looking good. Yeah, thank you. Well, for, the haircut, but yeah. You know, for everybody that's not familiar with you, if you've followed along the Tasty Crypto brand for some time, Mike, you're the head of content. Um, I think you do a fantastic job with everything that you put up there. Tons of great information on the website. So if you've seen an article on there, Mike has most likely written it. But um, just to give everybody a little bit more background uh, on yourself as we jump into this, where'd you come from? Why are you here? Uh, let us know a little bit more about yourself. Well, Ryan, I came from where you came from, Western New York. Yes. Uh, and I went to school in Western New York. And in 2006, I graduated college and I moved to Chicago the night after I graduated. And uh, they hired me at Thinkorswim, actually, okay. which was the company that Tom started, of course, before Tasty Trade. Um, so I was there, quite happy. So for... you do have some experience in this world. Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah, that's so, important. I mean, my whole uh, career has been, um, you know, a, a, a product of uh, Tom Sosnoff's imagination. So it began with uh, Thinkorswim and now Tasty. So just one or the other, um, and I like it. It's, it feels a lot like. Uh, Think or swim before we became Ameritrade, and then before Ameritrade became Schwab, it's smaller. Um, there's better customer service and a better product. So what isn't there to, to like? Beautiful. Well, I'm excited to do the show with you here today. We've got episode one of the Tasty Crypto Show. The Tasty Crypto Show is going to go everywhere. We're going to do the basics of blockchain. We'll get you set up uh, today. We're going to get you set up with a self custody wallet. We're going to go into the weeds in DeFi as well like I said, everywhere. So I'm super excited to do the show with you. Um, let's jump right into it, though. And on the first episode today, want to give everybody a little bit of background on Tasty Crypto. If you're not familiar with the application, we're going to talk about how it works, give you an overview here of all of this, um, set the application up. But before we do that, I think it's important that we talk about self-custody and this concept and really explain why we decided to build the Tasty Crypto application, how it's different from some of the other products that are out there, some of the other ways that people might approach crypto here today. So we're going to break down the differences between custodial and non-custodial wallets. We're going to look at you know, why you need a wallet. What do you do with this thing? Why self-custody? Okay, interesting concept. Why does it matter? Then we're going to go through and set up the Tasty Crypto app live on the show so everybody can follow along. If you've been curious about this, if you have questions, maybe we can answer some of those here today. And we'll give you some resources to get started afterwards, if that sounds okay to you, That sir. sounds great. I'm excited. All right. Well, let's do it. Let's jump into this and first talk about self-custody. Mike, what's the difference, you know, when you think about it, what's the difference between custodial and non-custodial? And when we say non-custodial, you're going to hear us use a lot of jargon, a lot of terms. We're going to try to limit that. But non-custodial, self-custody, same thing custodial wallet is a little bit different. What's the key differences there? What do people need to know about? Well, in blockchain technology, crypto is a, a byproduct of blockchain. Um, everything comes down to something called a private key, which is a very long alphanumeric um, string of digits and numbers that represents your crypto on a blockchain. It's kind of like a, like a bank password. You can think of it like that. Um, now, this is a very long figure, and it's very hard to write down, um, and it's very easy to misplace. And as a matter of fact, 20% of all crypto is lost, not through hacks, but through people just simply losing their seed phrase or their private key. So in a custodial account, kind of like uh, Coinbase, you don't have direct access to your private key. So they're safeguarding that for you. And because you don't have access to it, you can't trace your digital assets on a blockchain one-to-one. -one. So you can't be sure that they actually have your crypto. Um, you just have to trust that they have them. But the problem with trust is blockchain was designed as a trustless system. It wasn't designed um, for these centralized exchanges. It was designed for self-custody. And, well, and I think it, that that's a good point right there. What you kind of key in on is centralized exchanges. When I think about custodial, 
um, you know, the opposite of self custody here. It's that somebody else is a custodian, right? Um, it's not that it's it's not bad or anything like mm -hmm. that. It's just there's two different ways to approach this space. On one hand, you have your account with Tasty Trade. You have your account with Coinbase or others. Everybody knows who the crypto players are. You're trusting them to protect that crypto, to hold on to it for nothing bad to happen, right? Um, and I think, you know, for the most part, um, it makes sense to trust those. Sometimes it's easier to trust those yeah. entities, right? It's not like better or worse necessarily. I mean, I think some people would argue for the self custody side of it, but that's the big difference. It's yeah. who holds the key, who holds the keys, right? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. And uh, my first interaction with crypto was in 2016 or 2017, and I used probably like you, Ryan, Coinbase, because I didn't know what a self-custody wallet was. Um, but when you have a self-custody wallet, you are the only party privy to that private key. So you, you're going to have ownership of your assets, and you can look it up anytime you want. If you have uh, Bitcoin, you can look up on the, the Bitcoin blockchain, or ETH, you can look up on the Ethereum blockchain. You, don't, you know it's always going to be there, um, as long as you're safeguarding that private key, which we interpret as a seed phrase, because a seed phrase is a little bit easier to remember and write down. Um, and that is the primary difference between a self-custody and a custodial account. Yeah, it's kind of a novel concept. I mean, when you think about... I don't know if you want to call it crypto world or blockchain, but what happens and how things work on chain, how you interact as an individual, right? In, in some ways you have, well, certainly have a lot more control, maybe have some sovereignty as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the big difference. Um, when you have crypto with Coinbase, you have crypto with an exchange. Sure, it's there. You can trade it. It's easy to access. When you go to withdraw it into your fiat bank account, um, you're able to do that. It's very convenient. Hopefully, you're able to do that. I mean, sometimes, right, there's service outages, et cetera. But um, you're trusting that it's there. But you don't actually have control over it, not in the same way. And that's what you have to be aware of is how much control you actually do have when you're acting as your own custodian, when you're using your own wallet, when you're the only one that has access to the keys, only you can sign transactions transfer crypto you store the crypto there's risks associated with that but that's the big difference with self-custody you're in control I, I think the other thing that stands out to me and we'll move on from this slide but the other thing that stands out is just what you can access as a result yeah with a self-custody wallet you can participate in DeFi, decentralized finance you can access protocols you can do really whatever you want um, within reason or within what you know the technology enables you might not necessarily be able to do that with a centralized exchange again it's not a knock on centralized exchanges they serve a purpose uh, there's some very good ones out there but you're not necessarily going to be able to use your uh, let's say coinbase account or any other account to participate directly on chain maybe over time but you need a wallet today you need something like the tasty crypto wallet to be able to go and actually participate on chain and when you do that, there's, in my opinion, so much more opportunity. I mean, certainly relative to centralized exchange. You can access thousands of tokens, different protocols, et cetera, et cetera. But you can only do that with a self-custody wallet. Yeah. Um, so we talked about our first interaction with crypto, which was Coinbase. Um, so I was on Coinbase you know, a long time ago for a while until I found a, a token that I wanted to buy that they didn't offer. Um, and that's the other thing, is you touched on that, is the, the freedom you have with a self-custody crypto wallet. There's thousands of tokens in existence, but on most major exchanges, you can only trade a handful of them. Um, and I simply, why I opened a Web3 wallet, which is another word, another way of saying self-custody wallet or decentralized wallet, was because I wanted to have access to this coin. I, was that similar to your first experience with self-custody while you got into it? Yeah, I think you know everybody's gateway drug tends to be, or for most people, it's been Bitcoin. You mm -hmm. learn about this, you'll read the white paper, whatever, then people will get into Ethereum, they start to learn that there's other things out there. Uh, maybe some of these other blockchains have different purposes or exist for different reasons compared to Bitcoin. And you learn about the ecosystem, and then you naturally start to learn about what you can do, how you can participate in that space, where the opportunities are. And I think that is where you ultimately land on the self-custody side of it. You know, at some point in that journey, you're gonna hear that phrase, not your keys, not your coins. Right. I think there's enough examples now of centralized crypto firms failing, 
Um, there's reasons, you know, real reasons why I think it's important to to be aware of self custody and and to utilize it. But yeah, I think that's that's pretty much the journey. That's kind of what happened to yeah. me. You want to participate. You want to speculate. Some you want access to these things. And maybe you're only available on chain, so you need yeah. a wallet. It's you, like there's more to crypto than than just speculating on cryptocurrency. It wasn't designed for speculation. It was designed, at least Ethereum, to build these decentralized applications. So if you look at your phone, all the popular Web two apps on your phone, there's a, a versions of these run on Web three, which means there's no C suite. Um, the community makes the decisions, and they're incredibly f uh, efficient because they're governed by smart contracts, which is basically code, like if, so, then, kind of like you would put in an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. Um, and it's just very exciting what some of these um, platforms and protocols are doing, and you can't participate in any of their activities, let alone you know invest in their token without actually having a self-custody wallet, which is a key to this whole ecosystem which we call the the future of finance <laughs> you need a wallet my friends need a wallet. um what kind of wallet though there's a few different types and so i'm sure people have uh if you have some familiarity with the space you've heard of these probably heard about a hardware wallet or you think about that key being on a usb drive people use that term but there are a lot of great hardware wallets that exist ledgers one of the bigger names that's out there um, just to use that as an example you have a paper wallet which i'm not sure is used you know in 2024 as frequently as maybe the early days of bitcoin uh, if we go back you know more than a decade but um, you can write that private key out on a sheet of paper never connect to the internet can't don't lose it but yeah. um you know certainly you eliminate some risks i suppose in that way and then you have software wallets which is where i think you know you have a you know probably less security in some cases compared to the most secure way to do something it's not saying that it isn't secure it's just that in terms of it's directly connected to the internet all the time you know there's probably less security there than a hardware wallet or a paper wallet that hasn't been connected to the internet but this is going to offer you some convenience and this is what Tasty Crypto is. This is a software wallet where that private key is right there on the device. Uh, it might sit behind your biometric authentication, for example, so it's as secure as, as your phone, I suppose, but it's right there on the device. It's easy to access. So we have built that. We're going to give a demo of it here in just a second. I think hopefully a few people that have, are watching the show have already downloaded this. But before we do that, and as I pull it up on my screen over here, Mike, can you just walk everybody through a couple of the key concepts? Um, we're trying to demystify some of this. We talked about a private key. We talked about a seed phrase. Yeah. Just hit on the differences of those really quickly. So a private key is almost, you can think of it to be synonymous with a seed phrase. Um, a seed phrase simply, so first of all, for every blockchain address you have, there is a private key for that address. So you could have maybe 50 different private keys, um, which would mean you'd have, you'd have 50 different wallets, and it'd be a real pain in the butt to try to keep all those different accounts um, organized. When you have a wallet like we have, you're able to store you know, an infinite amount of private keys, and those are all accessed through a seed phrase, which can be thought of as a master lock, I would think, um, in that once you enter the seed phrase, all the other little private keys are accessed and you can interact with them and connect to any protocol you want. Um, so yeah, a seed phrase is just a more user-friendly version of the private key, a lot more user-friendly. Yeah, the one thing that we'll point out too as we walk through this process, we're gonna show everybody how to get this set up here on their own device, but you do not wanna share your seed phrase with anyone. Um, as we have it up here on the screen, it's usually 12 words or so. Um, there's different seed phrases, so what we're going to have in our app is 12 words. You don't want to share that with anyone because anyone that has that is able to control that private key or is able to unlock that wallet, so to speak. Yeah. And when you do that, you are in control of the crypto. You can send it wherever you want. You can do whatever you yeah. want with it, right? And so you don't want to lose this. Um, you don't want to share it, that's for sure. And if you lose it, there's no way to ultimately recover access um, you know sometimes you could delete the wallet from your phone or off of your computer if you have the seed phrase and you want to go back and kind of reinstall it I suppose to think of it that way you just import that seed phrase and now you have access to this if you want to use a different piece of software maybe you checked out tasty crypto you want to check out something else or you're using a different wallet and now you want to check out tasty crypto it's a front end and so you can import your seed phrase but you have to have that seed phrase so don't lose it write it down it's a very important part 
of the process here. But I want to jump into the Tasty Crypto app now. We're going to throw this up on the screen. And what you're seeing is exactly what the application looks like. This is on mobile for iOS and Android, but exactly what the application looks like when you first install it, the very first time. These are the onboarding screens. Talks a little bit about what this application does, what it supports, and what's coming soon, which is that direct connection with the Tasty Trade brokerage. So once you have the app on your phone, you want to click on Get Started. And this is going to give you the ability to either create a brand new wallet, which we'll walk through today, or like I was just talking about, you can import that existing wallet phrase. So maybe you have a MetaMask wallet and you want to access Ethereum with Tasty Crypto. You would export the phrase, you import it here, and vice versa. You can export these phrases. So you can use whatever piece of software that you like, but do not forget that seed phrase. Yeah, that was uh, when I was first started in the space, I was kind of like, I was a little confused by that, that you could use the same seed phrase on any wallet and you'll have access to your, your crypto, any wallet, MetaMask, Exodus, uh, Tasty Crypto, and there it is. Yeah, the way that I like to think about it is very similar to email, where you have an email address, you have a password. Uh, it's not exactly the same, but when you think about accessing that address, well, you can use a variety of different mail clients, right? You can use Gmail, you can use yeah. Apple Mail, Outlook, and so on. Um, so I'm just going to create a quick password here, and this is part of the process. So what's important to note is that the password, again, is not connected to an account or anything like that, right? You are accessing something that lives, in effect, on chain. You need the seed phrase to be able to do that. This password that we're creating here is simply just to unlock the application on this specific device. Right. So if you're at a coffee shop and you step up, nobody else is going to be able to access it. It's only for, like Ryan said, that specific device. It has nothing to do with the true account access, which is the seed phrase. Exactly. So that's the password. A lot of times we get questions around the browser extension and the mobile application using the password on one and it's not working on the other. We do have two versions of this software, or two forms, I suppose. You have a browser extension for Chrome, and then you have the mobile app on iOS or Android. If you're going to use both, you have to import the same seed phrase into those applications. And whether you want to or not, you're going to have to set a password. If you want to make it the same, you want to use different ones, whatever your preference is, you're going to be logging into those separately. Yeah. Um, they're not connected in any way other than what they're viewing on chain. So any activity that um, is you're engaging with or anything that happens on the mobile side, you will re see it reflected on the browser, but they are two separate applications. And there's no kind of like central you know, counterparty, right? We're a software, um, a services company, You, but we can't help you with recovering your password that's yeah, all up to you it goes this is where self-custody should really make sense because all financial accounts we're familiar with are custodial accounts somebody's looking after those funds for us nobody's looking after your crypto on our end yeah, it uh, is. including the government it's, this is only you this is outside of the system in this a sense um in that you are in full control and so i guess with that there are risks and yeah. responsibilities, I suppose, as well as you know the reward that maybe comes from it. So we're just going through the process right here. We've created that password that's going to allow us to unlock the device. And now this is the manual backup. This is where we, we view that seed phrase and we write this down. We are just going to throw this wallet away, but I want to just quickly write down what this seed phrase is here so we can continue. Um, because on the next screen, what you're going to have to do is go through the process where you can confirm that you actually wrote down the seed phrase. What you definitely don't want to have happen here is you go through this process, you skip through it, and now all of a sudden you're on chain, you've decided that you don't want to write the seed phrase down right away, you maybe have a crypto balance, you've been doing things, and then you get a new phone, or you delete the application accidentally, whatever it might be, and then you come back around and you realize, oh, I don't know that seed phrase. So I'm just gonna type this out here, got a couple more to go, and then we'll go through that process where we actually confirm that in fact, we did write this down. And I think you also wanna be conscious of where you store this. Um, it's easy yeah. to just take a screenshot of it, put it on your device, but you don't wanna put it in a place where you also could lose that. Um, this is really the last resort to access your assets on chain. So if you put it on a piece of paper in your wallet and you lose your wallet, well, you're out of luck. So just keep that in mind. 
And it's also important, a lot of younger people are involved with crypto, so they don't think about this, but um, if something were to happen to you, if I were to get hit by a bus on my way to work, and nobody else had access to my seed phrase, which they don't right now, that crypto's gone forever. A lot of younger people, how old are you? Well, I mean, I'm 23, Ryan. How old are you? I agree. Um, you definitely want to make sure that if, you know, especially if you have a lot of crypto that yeah. you're accessing this way, you know, have a plan, I suppose. So we've written down our seed phrase for the manual backup. We're going to understand um, our risks here. We're going to click that button. And then when I continue, this is what I'm talking about. So it's going to ask me to just tap on these or drag them, and I'm going to put them in the order that I wrote them down. So this, again, just confirms that at least you went through this process to write it down somewhere um, at some point. And we won't use this again because we have exposed the seed phrase right. to anybody that's watching this. Yeah. Ideally, um, when you so. open a wallet, you're not broadcasting the seed <laughs> phrase to the entire world. Yeah, Ideally, right. In a perfect world. Um, you also have to, to put this in in the uh, the right order, so let me make sure I'm referencing it correctly. But uh, yeah, we'll get this set up, and then we're gonna show everybody how you can add uh, a couple different tokens to this, what it does, we'll just talk through this, and then wrap it up. But I will mention that this gives you access to both, right now, both the Ethereum and the, um, the Bitcoin blockchain. And Ethereum is what we're excited about, because Ethereum is a blockchain that interacts with decentralized applications. I'm excited about Bitcoin. Yeah. You can do you can do anything All in these right. applications. Our government doesn't let us do a lot of things, but anything you imagine, there's an application built for that. Um, Polymarket, I don't know if you saw a, a former politician uh, tweeted about uh, Polymarket the other day, which is essentially a, a betting protocol, where you can bet on anything from the existence of aliens to uh, to who's going to win the next election, um, just anything. And they, these bets, they're user-created. So anybody can propose um, a bet, you know, and it's yeah. usually on a sliding scale from zero to uh, to 100. Um, so if it's at two, there's a 2% chance that aliens, the that's, government is going to say aliens exist next month. That's, that's just one the example. draw. No, I mean, that is the real reason this was created, <laughs> just to be able to access those alternative <laughs> betting markets and bet on the alien there's Landing. option protocols. You can you could trade options in decentralized finance, or you could actually be an options market maker. You could be your own citadel. And you got um, it. It's incredible what you can do. <laughs> we just put in our seed phrase, and we've created our wallet. Mike, we can't get into the alien betting markets and the DeFi just yeah. yet. I hope you don't fund this wallet, Ryan, because a lot of people know that seed phrase. Now. This is how it works. Once you've done that, you click continue, and this is going to, by default, populate Ethereum and Bitcoin on here. This will also, if you're importing a new wallet address, this will automatically look at what other token balances you have and it'll add those tokens. So if we had a balance here, obviously we don't, we just created this, it's brand new. But if I imported a wallet address, which we'll show on the next show, um, we'll actually use one that's got some, some tokens in here, it'll pull it in automatically. If there's something you wanna see and you wanna you know, almost use this as a watch list, you can start to add assets just by clicking on that plus or add button there and you can search for these. It's gonna pull this in. It'll show you the current price, the change in the day. So it'll take a, a second here, but now we can see Chainlink and Uniswap, the prices, the change, even though we don't have a balance there, we can add those to this. So you can start to look at some of the information as you just click around on here. And I would encourage everybody to, if you download this one, obviously write your seed phrase down. But get set up, take a look, check it out. Um, you can click around on this. There's not anything that you can do wrong. There's no crypto in here. But this is gonna allow you to not only you know, store crypto that you have, analyze what's going on in the market, track your activity. We have the ability to view NFTs. So there's none in this wallet, but we'll show you a wallet that has them. So you can store some of your digital assets in here. And the other thing I wanna point out, Mike, that uh, you know this really out of the box, gives you access to some of what you're talking about that's exciting in DeFi. We are gonna get into all of that uh, in later episodes of this show, but you're able to trade using a decentralized exchange or swap tokens directly in the app. So if you want to add crypto, if you have a PayPal account or you wanna use Transact, these are third-party partners of ours that you can add crypto to your wallet address through. Like I mentioned at the beginning, we are very close to that direct integration with Tasty Trade. In the meantime, Tasty Trade has the ability to withdraw crypto assets. So if you have a crypto account at Tasty Trade 
and you want to move that crypto on chain, you want to withdraw it, you can do that for both Bitcoin and Ethereum. You just have to enter the wallet address of the you know, Tasty Crypto app that you used. So you can add crypto here. And then once you have those positive balances, you can swap that crypto. So if I have ETH and I want to sell it for USDC, US dollar stablecoin, very easy to do that right here directly in the app. And so that's getting started with the Tasty Crypto app. I want to just jump um, back to the slides for just a second, because I think anybody that has found some value in the demo here, some of what we've been talking about, clearly we're excited about uh, not only the show, but what you can do with the application and some of the opportunities that hopefully we're able to highlight. For anybody that's um, you know just getting started, Mike, do you want to talk through just some of the you know the other resources that we have um, that I think are immensely valuable, especially the, the Learn Center? Well, thank you, Ryan. I spent a lot of time on the Learn Center. Um, so we have, so if you're looking at, if you just download Tasty Crypto, again, there's 10,000 tokens in existence. Where do you begin? We've been making a lot of uh, blog posts on the best X, you know, the best 11. People love lists, Ryan. Um, I used to be a real writer, but now I just pump out lists because that's what the people want. So that's what I give them. I give them lists. Hey, uh, we, we love you for that. So we have like the best uh, seven stable coins. Um, you know, we look at things like liquidity, market cap, things like that. Um, the seven best tokenization projects. Um, so on the blog, if you just scroll through seven best cryptos for long term investing, we have a lot of good lists that we put a lot of thought into to get you guys started. Um, so I would check out the blog and also on our homepage right next to blog, it says learn. And there you'll see kind of a learn center. Um, there's three different tabs. Crypto 101, start there, and then DeFi, which is a little bit more intricate. It's more exciting, but it involves a, a learning curve. And what I found um, about crypto and DeFi and blockchain in general is if you begin to read about it, I don't know anybody that actually knows what crypto is and how blockchain works that, that actually takes the time to learn that that doesn't agree with it. Like... I can guarantee you Warren Buffett hasn't taken a course on decentralized finance because it's just it just makes sense, Ryan. For well, a hedge, for a, a monetary hedge with everything that's going on in the world, it's it's necessary. Even if it's one percent of your portfolio, you, you have to have spend some, some time on it. No, I agree. I agree. You don't have to sell me. You've got to you've well, got to spend some time on it. But I encourage everybody to check out the Content and Learn Center, join our community, follow us on X. It'd probably be helpful if we put the Twitter handle up there, but it's at Tasty Crypto. I'll add that next time. And also on our website, I would encourage everybody, if you really want to get um, the true Mad Mike flavor, subscribe to the newsletter. Yeah. Um, at the bottom of the website, you can enter your email address, and we put out what I think has become um, a very informative newsletter every single week and that's written by yours truly mad mike across from me here but that's going to do it for our show i hope everybody um enjoyed the introduction to this what we've been working on we're going to bring a lot more to you um surprise tom gave us half an hour twice a week kind of unleashed us here you know we've crypto been doing unleashed. crypto unleashed we've been yeah. doing crypto conversations on thursday um in the morning at 8 40 and i really enjoy coming on and talking with tom and tony but this show is going to allow us the tasty crypto show to really go a lot deeper into this space highlight the app we're going to use this to trade we'll have a wallet that you can follow along with as well so we're very excited about it if you don't have the application what are you doing? Get it on your device. Um, you can get it in five minutes. You don't have to fund less it. Than Just that. check it out. I, it, we were agreed on 30 seconds. Come on. Um, well, <laughs> I have a slow internet connection, hey, Ryan. Download, download the app. And I think most importantly, we would love to hear what people think. We know um, there's a lot of cool things that we could do. We want to know what you want to see us do next. So check this out. Um, let us know what you think. But there's a lot more you can do on chain that we're excited about. And we're going to talk about that on the next show. But until then... This is the Tasty Crypto Show. I'm Ryan Grace. I'm Mad Mike. We'll see you Wednesday. <laughs>